I even had to buy a new pair of glasses after watching the show. So yeah, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure y'all join on Facebook, Instagram. It ain't gonna cost you nothing. So stop wasting your Yo, yo, what's up? At the hottest podcast in the city, the smartest dumb people. I'm here with my nigga, that dude Johnson. You know what I'm saying? We go way back like four flats on the Cadillac. Y'all tune in every week or every time. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Do what you're supposed to do. Like, comment, share. Tell your people about it. Y'all know what it is. It's the smartest dumb people. See, man, when you get that type of Because he literally sing with other people. So, like, this is a story of the best podcast in the city. Like, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not pandering. You know what I'm saying? And they take vocals and, you know, strengthening. That's how I'm living on too much. You're a real hustler, huh? That's pretty neat. I got into it. But, uh, I also, uh, met the team. She, they know she likes to go outside and play soccer by herself. We have to. Team all the way. It's more than her team all the time. Right. Make sure. I want to change it like Snoop Dogg. He's an icon in all festival life. I'm most of the biggest icon in the world. world. No more, but before I let you explain that, I want to show a little clip of a little mom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the smartest dumb people, and I am the host, Anthony, that dude, Johnson. And always, always, always is gonna be somebody at this table with me. Today we got LV the Great in the building, my brother. We got Shalanda Moore. And we got Rashad Abram. I appreciate y'all for coming through. She got a book coming out. She got a book coming out. It's called Escaping the Devil's Nest, Married to a Serial Killer. Everybody couldn't wait to hear, listen to this episode. I'm, I'm actually excited myself because I want to know uh, all about the book, what you do, where you from, who you is. So let's get straight to it, man. How y'all week been? Man, go ahead. <laughs> well, mine's been cool, you know what I'm saying? I didn't Crusader, you know what I'm saying? He just saving lives, you know what I'm saying? Just escape through life, huh? Man, you know. Every day is sunny. Every day is sunny. I never had, I, I never had a bad day. What about you, Ms. Moore? Mine's just good. All right, well, we're glad to have you here. Let's get straight to it. So let's get straight to the book. Uh, you were married to uh, Nico Jenkins, okay. the, the known uh, killer in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, they say he was a serial killer. How many people did he kill? Four. Four. How many people do it take to be a serial killer? Two. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a number. I thought it was a number. <laughs> Two. Let's get straight to it. So how did you meet Nico? Um, I met him through his sister, Erica. Okay. Well, now. Okay. All right. So, before we get to that, because it's so, so, before we get, how you met Nico, you were the person before mm. that. Mm. You're right. Okay, so, what person, who are you? You know what I'm saying, where you from? You know what I'm saying, was your childhood like? You know what I'm saying, who was you before? Father is 
okay. So, what was your childhood like? Was it, would you consider it normal? Or traumatic. Or, now, outside of what we consider the normal, because obviously you grew up in a not what we consider normal in such a family environment. Right. Okay. Because you're the foster child. So. Um, were you adopted? No. Never adopted. No. So a, a foster child is where you live under the state and wait to be adopted? Yep. Mm. State okay. word. And then if you get adopted, you're not So where do you stay if you're a foster child? You love the foster home. Uh, oh. oh, okay. Okay. Teacher, seniors. Mm -hmm. um, I jumped from foster home to foster home. Um, I had a couple of stable ones where I stayed like a while. Um, I had one with my siblings. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I felt like the woman, you know, cared for my siblings more than you know. Um, than you? Than me. They all had the same last name, ironically. Okay. Uh, my sister looked like her in a sense, you know, they got the same nose and stuff. And, um, yeah, I just started acting out. I did stuff like put Tabasco, a whole bottle of Tabasco sauce and spaghetti. Uh, in the provisions? In the spaghetti. The food? I did. No, that's the, the, the provisions. Yeah, didn't nobody okay. eat that part. Okay. Not even the dog. So why would you sabotage? Did you feel love? Um, in, in, well, in any of those foster homes, did. did you feel any sense of love, any sense of unity? I did, um, and a couple, but mostly one. Um, she was my foster mom. I met her when I was 11. I mm -hmm. had some problems. I got, I left, and then I came back. I actually was at her house for three times, okay. and she like basically raised me. Um, until I was like 18. Okay. And then I went to another foster home and then I went to like the Jacobs Place, it's independent living place. Which is in council place? No, it's in all the uh, saddle group. Oh, saddle group. Okay, I'm not familiar. Okay. So, and then after that, I just wanted my sister to take care of me. So she kind of started like getting, you know, she went through her classes and did what she had to do. And then, um, yeah, I got in trouble. My first uh, charge was when I was 18. Mm -hmm. My foster mom, my foster mom, I was working two jobs and uh, she basically took my money. She like stole this. from me? So, yeah, and okay. so I had stole some money and some So you stole from me? <clears throat> and she filed charges on me. Um, and and you put you in jail for that? Yeah. Well, well no, because her test for the tax was illegal on paper. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw so, the rings and it was like over. And you pondered it. Yeah, it was okay. Me. Okay. So this led you down your road of incarceration? Yeah, I got out. <clears throat> I got out. Um that's when I had went to the Jacob's home. Um and then I started boosting and I got a shoplifting charge in July, August. Something mm -hmm. like that. We'll say July. Mm -hmm. And that's what set me on to where I'm at. Where you at now? I got a question. Do you think that um, you were a victim of circumstances? Or do you think, and when I say circumstances, like nobody asks to be born without parents. You know what I'm saying? And I feel the same way about people in Afghanistan and things like mm -hmm. that. You really, you really just become a product of your environment. Do you believe uh, your path would have been different? Uh, or do you feel like you were a victim of your circumstances? It's hard to, it's hard to, in, in build, it's hard <coughs> to Can think about. Can I say of, something, yes, sir? And, and just respectfully, no, that's not no third world stuff. No experience. We experienced that here. Like now, today, like every all parents ain't responsible. 
You know what I'm saying? Every man, every woman ain't responsible. But are you, and you, that's I'm, from your perspective. Well, so let's get her. Well, that's well, from your perspective. We, we know your know, perspective. That's not a perspective, no. But you, but you don't. But that's fine. Let's, let's get her perspective. But I'm not even talking about that. Let's get her perspective. All right, go ahead. Do you believe that you were a victim of... And when I say victim of circumstances, I mean, like, I was a product of my environment. I used to sell drugs and th do things like that. But that was just my circumstances. I sh now, if I was growing up in the perfect neighborhood and all of my friends was, was doing, like, going to have jobs and doing things like that, I would have been just like that. All of my friends were selling drugs and playing basketball. So that's what I wind up doing. So I do believe you can be a victim of your, of your circumstances. So what I'm asking you is, uh, growing up in a foster home, uh, uh, being in and out of foster homes and dealing with different people, did you feel like you were lost and became a victim of your circumstances? It's just like stealing from and pounding the race. I did because <clears throat> in a sense, like, I was taught so much, but I wasn't taught the things I needed to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a foster mom that was very judgmental. You know, um, but you get around people that actually live real life, you know, that's, you know, um, not in a good job or something like that. They don't show you how to make your money. Mm. And, you know, if I ain't got no job, well, not now, but if I didn't have a job, I was boosted. I was, you know, doing what I had to do to make my money um, so I could be comfortable in a sense, not even comfortable because when 